Before I joined Cashflow Tribe, I like would go to these meetups and it just, it, nothing really changed. Like there was no accountability, which is one thing that's really core to Cashflow Tribe. Not only did you have like this intense sense of community, but you also had accountability. Uh, I was working for somebody else that was not me. Okay, this nine to five rat race that I'm traveling, uh, I, I don't like it. I know something is bigger there for me. Cashflow Tribe has been some serious practitioner information that I was able to tap into. I knew I needed to take it to a higher level. Cashflow Tribe was Canadian, and that's what really kind of moved me more towards them. This is exactly the kind of group and people that I want to be part of. If somebody's losing in one of my deals, I don't want to do a deal. 
If I cannot have my partners to win on the deal as well, I don't want the deal. Hi, my name is Douglas. My name is Tish. My name is Alex, and I am... And I am... And I'm Cashflow Tribe. Cashflow Tribe. Cashflow Tribe. Huh. Cashflow Tribe. Huh. Hope everybody's doing well. My name is Daniel Belaygrove. I am the host of the Masterclass. I hope you're doing super well. Man, I gotta say welcome to yet another one because I got a special guest. We're gonna be talking about JV partnerships, straight up. We're gonna talk about how do you partner, make strategic partnerships in order for you to do deals. Whether you're looking to do your first or your next deal, maybe you're looking to get some momentum and start to do your third or your fourth deal, I want to give you an opportunity to see how you can do your next deal with joint venture partnerships. So if you are here and you can hear me, let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. I do see I do see a few of y'all. Let me dive in real quick. We got Robert from Hamilton. We got Jeffrey Lung. What's up, everybody? Amanda is in the building. Amanda Schultz, good to see you in the chat. We got Luciana, Blaine Kerr, awesome, awesome, Jan Carpenter from the Whitby. I love it. I love it. Ian from Alberta. Hope you're doing super well. We got Ben Humble in the building from Miami. Uh, awesome. We got Chantel Amir. We got, oh, that's awesome. We got Steve. Yep. Adrian Montine. Good to see you. Love it. Love it. Love it. Carolyn from Burlington. Erica Campbell from the Halifax. I love it. I love it. We got Jeffrey from Markham. We got Blaine Kerr from Toronto, Tammy from Oshawa. Awesome, awesome. I love it. It's so good to see a lot of y'all. Tony Bush, Peter Palm. Man, this is awesome. I hope you're excited. It's going to be a fantastic call because, like I told you, the whole purpose is so that you can understand how to partner. See, here at Cashflow Tribe, we have so many members. We have over 3,000 members here in Cashflow Tribe, and you got to ask yourself, how do I take advantage of this opportunity to network and to get connected with people? Maybe you're looking for realtors. Maybe you're looking for contractors, surveyors, appraisers. Maybe you're looking for um, uh, people who can finance your deals, whatever the case may be. In particular, we're talking about how to JV, and you absolutely, and I'm speaking from experience, you absolutely can join venture on your deals, especially when you get into rooms just like this one. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. But I also want to make a special shout out to Vinny, the one who holds it down from behind the scenes. Vinny, if you can unmute yourself and say what's up to the people. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, sir. If there's any questions, anything you need, he will absolutely be able to attend to you. And I also want to let you guys know that if you have questions throughout this entire show, we will absolutely get them answered. I just need you to put them in the comments so that we can address them and get right to it. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and start this presentation. And so as you can see, we're doing deals through joint venture partnerships. That is the goal for today. Get excited. My name is Daniel Blagrove. Like I mentioned before, I am the seventh member out of over 3,100 members in Cashflow Tribe. They say the early bird gets the worm. Well, <laughs> I definitely am one of those. I'm a council mind, um, a council mastermind member, been a part of this amazing group of people where we're able to uh, talk deals, talk growth, talk ideas, talk amazing things, and so, and not only just talk about it, but we also do it. As a matter of fact, <laughs> one of my one of my uh, great speakers tonight. He actually is a part of the Council Mastermind as well, and we will actually be diving in, absolutely. Uh, and I've been doing deals since 2019, and so really looking forward to adding value to the conversation today. The speaker for today is none other than TJ Ainsborough. He is from Midland, Ontario. He is a serial flipper. I'm t when I say serial, I mean he literally is flipping everything you can see, feel, touch, or smell. Actually, as a, as a one thing, I, I uh, want to let y'all know he actually, and maybe you can let me know. Let me know if I'm wrong, TJ. You're banned from the. I think it was the Toronto North auction. Uh, and <laughs> man, like you, you know, you be doing business when people just be shutting you down. They don't want you to be doing all the stuff you've been doing, uh, which is amazing. He's been doing this flip. He's been doing this flipping business from since he was 21 years old. He's been doing. He did his first deal at 21. His most recent flip. Is well over six figures, doing 150,000 nets, not not gross. That is net, 
And uh, he's also looking to become a private lender. This is what I mean when I say getting in these rooms, right? He's looking to be a private lender with over $10 million in, re in reserves to serve investors just like you and me doing deals in this market. So listen, not only are you going to be learning from TJ today, but hey, listen, get to know him and get that opportunity for him to know you because you never know when you might be doing deals with him in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, TJ Ainsborough, how are you doing tonight? Hey, thanks for having me, Daniel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I ain't got the, the, the champion music for you, but no. <laughs> the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do what I can. Awesome. Y'all let, let let TJ know that he feels welcome in the chat. Thank you, uh Erica and Robert. And, and there's another TJ, TJ, TJ in the chat. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, we're not gonna waste any time. Today's goal is very simple. I've been going over this for several weeks and it's not gonna change. We want to make progress one hop at a time. One step at a time. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, let's turn off all distractions. Let's really set aside our our, our, our any any hobbies or any other things that maybe get our attention. If we got some kids, hey, maybe bring them into this conversation or maybe have them, you know, I don't know, do something. But let's, let's just really get focused here. What I mean by doing hops and doing steps is we often want to do our first or next deal. And it's a huge mountain. A massive mountain. And the idea of buying thousands and thousands of dollars of real estate can be very daunting. But the truth is, if you break it down into bite-sized steps and you just take one step at a time, you absolutely, with consistency and with consistent effort, you absolutely will be able to accomplish this deal, this goal of accomplishing your first or next deal. So we're really going to talk about uh, 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 goals here. Um, I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is the right slide, right, TJ? Or is this the right presentation? Yeah, yeah, you look, uh, it, it looks good. What are, what are your goals? Okay, cool, cool. So what are your goals here? We're talking about uh, when it comes to doing joint venture partnerships, it is so important that you actually understand what you're actually looking to do, right? Many people are looking to join venture, but for what reason are you looking to join venture, right? And so, TJ, can you just talk on this, for example? Why why is it that it's so important for you to understand your goals and what that relates to when it comes to being a joint venture partner? Yeah, so um, that's the biggest thing too, right, is, is finding the right person to partner with in those type of situations, right? So, like, it, it, it sounds all fun in games when you're just like, yeah, let's partner. And, like, I, you're doing real estate. I'm doing real estate. But, like there everybody's strategies and goals are different and making sure that you're aligned with that person and you guys goals are aligned really helps right so for instance you know i have people reaching out to me saying hey i'd love to do like i can qualify for a mortgage and i can and i can bring money um to the deal but what they're looking for is a, is almost like a you know they want to park their money and then qualify that way meanwhile you know i'm focusing more on the flips where i'm turning it over in 3 to 4 months my strategy doesn't align with your strategy, but I can put you in connection with people who are focusing on that type of strategy. So when you're saying, what are your goals? It's a huge, huge, um, you, you need to know them. It's a huge uh, uh, factor when it comes to picking your partner. Man, and I think what's actually really important is really getting alongside them and actually understanding what is the journey that they wish to take and you're looking for alignment. So actually, well, here's what I'm actually going to do. I'm actually going to put out a poll right now and I want y'all to be able to answer this question. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I don't see it here, so I'm actually going to make a new poll, all right? Um, well, as, I, uh, as I'm typing this, I'm going to go on to the next part here. We're talking about strengths and weaknesses. When when you were when you're looking for joint venture partnerships, do you take into account what are you, what you're good at and what you're not good at, and does that actually play any role in terms of doing a joint venture partnership? Absolutely, that's that's everything. So uh, you always hear um, this one thing that I loved when I joined Council was uh, it was a good um, uh, uh, limiting belief that I broke through was was you always think that you need to fix your weakness so a lot of people like oh i'm really bad at this so i gotta work on it i gotta work on it i gotta work on it you know how much time you waste trying to work on something that you just generally suck at so why not partner with somebody who is that's their strong suit um i was able to go so much faster because of the partnership i was able to create because the person that i chose to partner with shored up every single one of my weaknesses and I brought my strengths to shore up that person's weaknesses. 
So together we are literally unstoppable and it's going and and we have moved so fast in the 10 months that we partnered, um, sorry, eight months that we partnered together, um, done more deals than I've done in, in, in my whole entire real estate career. So, wow. That's phenomenal. I love that. I'm actually going to put this poll out there. Here's it. Here it is. What is the number one reason someone should JV with you? All right. You could talk money, time and energy, knowledge and experience or network. And I want y'all to, to really put those answers in, not only for everybody to understand, but it gives you an understanding of who is in the room and what advantages you can take it, you can leverage, especially if you can find that unique alignment. Now, TJ, you actually mentioned something very interesting. You said that they had covered all your weaknesses, your strengths complemented their weaknesses. As a result of coming together, you are unstoppable. So let me ask you this question. When you were starting out, what were your strengths and what were your weaknesses? Um, so yeah, I guess it would touch base on, on kind of the other section and, and well, there's some things on here and then there's some things that like just personality wise that I was able to bring. So, uh, experience wise, I did have a couple flips under my belts, um, before we, we partnered up. That was, that was a, a great tool that I brought market, no market knowledge, the areas that we were targeting, I was 100% comfortable. Um, I did not need to look at the realtor board or pull up any comps or anything before acting on a deal because I knew the numbers in and out because that was my area. Um, network, we both kind of had the uh, essentially the same the same same tools and resources that way. Uh, skills, I had skills to be able to do the deal personally. Um, it was a learning curve from doing the flips myself to to bring in other contractors in. Um, to take over money. My partner was able to bring uh, a lot of that to the deal. Energy. Uh, we both had a lot of energy. So, um, you know, you get you get really motivated and <laughs> um, and time. Um, at first, we uh, we all thought we had time. And then I, I ended up filling up my plate so much that, um, you know, I bought the pawn shop at the same time as joining council at the same time of buying four flips. So, um, time, I, I had time at first, but then I ended up, uh, <laughs> putting too much on my plate. So we learned, uh, we learned together and, and, uh, was able to free up a lot of my time that way. Um, and then personality wise, right? Like I was just, I'm very, very, as you can tell, I'm going to go start a bunch of things. Some of them might succeed, some of them might not. Um, so the, the drive that I have and, and being able to just act fast, is very, uh, you know, is, is great. But at the same time, I'm, you know, on, when it comes to the back end stuff and, and crossing my T's and dotting my I's, I ain't so good at that. So <laughs> I can pull the trigger fast, but, uh, you know, my partner is that amaz amazing at, um, you know, making sure that, you know, I'm not going too crazy. Like the train's not derailing over here and there. Um, you can just stay focused. So yeah, that's actually really, really important to recognize. The fact that you took inventory, like you recognize, okay, here's what I'm good at, here's what I'm not good at, and you are able to communicate that with your partner and in, in, in such a way, you're not only just simply asking just to ask, but you're being very strategic, you're being very intentional, and you also and have a goal in mind. Absolutely. And, and, and up front, right? Like being like right away, hey, I absolutely suck at this. If you expect any sort of me doing this you know like you know that's not uh that's not you know you're just setting ourselves up to fail right so um the the transparency right off the bat made it so much easier and left out a lot of you know anxiety or or would you like you could say like uh, um you know uh stress or, or friction in the in the partnership because they already knew what i sucked at right right so and you know what? That's actually very interesting and very important because you didn't only just say, hey, this is what I'm good at. You literally said, I suck at this. Do not make me in charge of this. I will blow it. And you would think that that would cost you a partnership because it's like, whoa, you're not good at this? No, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to do business with you. But actually, that actually probably made you want to do more deals, right? Why is that the case, in your opinion? Why is that the case? You, you, you're, it's almost like an icebreaker right there, right? Um, and then, you know, showing a sign of... of uh, you know, being humble and, and, and taking that, that, uh, that acceptance of just like, um, it shows a layer of trust right there, right? right? Right. That you're forming right off the bat. Um, and, and it sets the expectations 
proper so that you can set attainable goals and 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 achieve them quicker right if i yeah. if i know that hey you suck at this well we're not going to get you to do this we're going to fill somebody in on this way or i'm going to take over because i'm stronger at that and it's just it just moves so much faster it's it's one of those things where you what you think will actually cost you a partnership is maybe the very thing that will that will actually unite you because when you're able to show your, show your transparency and 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 be honest like that is what you need in a partnership you need to be able to say hey this isn't going to work under these circumstances hey I shouldn't do this. Hey, I think I should really handle this because I'm absolutely the person who can handle this. And so when you do that, you put yourself in a position where people are going to be like, oh, you're trustworthy. This is why Cash Flow Tribe, one of our core values is transparency. It's so important that you're honest and upfront and you're straight up because it helps you get to the answer as fast as possible. Don't bounce around the bush. Don't be, you know, hippie holly. Just say it straight up. I'm going to go to the polls real quick because a lot of y'all, uh, I see a lot of responses. So I'm going to just uh, show the results. We got 14% of our audience that have uh, money as the number one reason. Time and energy takes the number one spot as far as as far as percentage with 44% of y'all. 38% of y'all said knowledge and experience. Very interesting. And then 2% said network. I actually want to point out one thing. It, everybody always says, oh, everybody, everybody wants to be the active partner. Nobody wants to invest the money. Guys, there is literally 14% of individuals in this room. I was room. just going to touch on this. I was <laughs> I looked at that poll and I was shocked, right? Because there is a ton of people, I bet you, in this room that they have so much time and energy and knowledge and experience and they're just sitting on the sidelines because they can't find the money. Well, now you have 14%. Of, I don't know how many people are here. 65? What's 14% of 65? Dude, I'm going to do like, it right now. 60, by the like, way, always looking for JV partners for uh, <laughs> for money deals. So let me know. That's 10. That's 9.1. So nine people. Yeah. There is a nine people on this call who said, hey, guys, I got money. I'm looking for people who either have time and energy, have knowledge, experience, or a combination of the two plus the network. Holla at your boy or your girl because I'm ready to work. That's essentially what they're saying, guys. And this is why it's so important that you're not only on the call, but you're active. You're putting yourself out there. You're having conversations. You're being honest and you're straight up. You recognize your strengths and your weaknesses, right? Let's continue this conversation. So here, here's one of the bigger things that always comes up. TJ, oh, I got to get the deal first before I get the money. Or, oh, TJ, you know what? I got to get the money before I get the deal. TJ, talk to us about this right here. What is your viewpoint on this? Is it the chicken or the egg? <laughs> I was just about to say this is the chicken or the egg, right? So um, you know what comes first before that is the relationship. Um, the relationship comes before both. And the um, setting the steps to do the deal or the money, right? Like, so what I mean by that is when, before I got the deal, I told everybody what I was doing. Um, like nonstop, like uh, of what I was doing. Right. So everybody I talked to, Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, I'm doing this. These are my results. Hey, I'm doing this. Um, you know, at first I did everything by myself and I never, you know, I was very, kept everything to my to myself but then i started telling everybody look i'm this is what i do i buy distressed homes i'm i'm repairing them i'm renovating them i'm adding value i'm gentrifying the area um you know it's like monopoly people would get excited about what i was doing and what's cool is both of those things would start coming i had money come to me and i had deals come to me just because of of what i was talking about what i was doing in a scenario like this it's it's funny because if you didn't see this poll all the people with time and energy would never think that the money's there. What I would, what I'm going to say here is, you know, if I had to pick chicken or egg, I would say, you know, the deal trumps anything. If you get the deal, don't be afraid to do the deal because you're scared that there's no money. The money will always come. If you have the deal, if it's a good deal, if it's a good deal, people will come, money will come. Um, and it's uh, yeah. So I, I would say deal. Um, and, Everything is based on relationships. My the, um, I would say about one third about of the amount of deals I get are referral based, um, which is a very very high number. And uh, money wise, like once a deal credibility everything, the money starts coming. So awesome, I love it. I'm also filling out the second poll here. Uh, where are you in your investing journey? And here's something to note. All right, so we got about 25 percent of people brand new. They're just learning. We got 65% of y'all ready to do either your first or your fifth deal. 
And then you've got just under 10% uh, people who have completed five or more deals, which is interesting because if you're at, if I'm at, if I'm looking at these at this data, I'm assuming that the people who said they have time and energy and the people who have some sort of experience or knowledge, they're probably somewhere within the action taker phase and the brand new phase less than that. But the people who got money, hey, maybe you are ready to take action or maybe you're experienced. Right. And so that's something to take note of. Right. You want to you want to put yourself out there. That is the biggest thing. What when it comes uh, TJ said, uh, he says the deal trumps anything. But here's the key. If you are looking for that deal, but at the same time, you're putting yourself out there. You're having conversations. You're introducing yourself. You're saying, hey, my name is so and so. And I'm looking for deals. I'm looking for money. This is my business model. This is what I'm doing. Uh, and, and having those conversations. Right. If you're able to do that while getting that deal, you absolutely will increase your chances of closing a, a property with someone else's money. See, you don't want to wait until the absolute last second to raise capital. See, you possibly can if you do get that hot smoking deal. But the truth is, you don't want to be pressured to just take the first uh, dollar that comes to you. Because here's the truth. There are more people who have money than people who have the skill to get deals. And maybe TJ, you can tell me if I'm wrong in your experience. What would you say? Would you say there's more, there is more people who have money or more, or more, or there's more people who have the skill of getting deals? Yeah. Um, I touch, touch on that skill to get the deals, an actual deal, an actual deal is better than a deal, right? So everybody's, um, uh, per, uh, perception of what a deal is, uh, is different. So, I would say the skills to get the deals, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> um, right. Yeah, and I'm actually shocked at this poll too. I'm, I'm wondering why 27% of them aren't in the action taker phase, right? So, well, that's that's the goal. We want to get them <laughs> over in there. <laughs> hey, yeah, you got to gotta push them off the cliff. That's right. That's right. No, uh, and I think I think the 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 most important thing, right? Uh, it, honestly, is there is no wrong answer. You can raise the money because there is the aspect of you dig your well before you're thirsty. There's nothing wrong with that absolutely. as well, especially if you're able to get the money before you find the deal. That's fantastic. So I, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you can be the money with with other people's money. It's crazy. If you guys have time, there's going to be a, a mastermind at the end of this month. OPM. I'm going to be a guest speaker on there talking about how I locked up this bad boy behind me for no, no money down. So, um, man, yeah, OPM, you can make, you can, there, there's a whole niche in that money spot that you guys don't, you might not even know. So wait a second. Hold on, TJ. Wait, wait, wait. I think you're giving a little too much on them gold nuggets. You mean to tell me that even if I ain't got the money in my bank account, I can still be the money partner in another deal. Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, dude, we're gonna have to go levels deep on this one. This is definitely gonna make people still learning into action taking phase after this. This is phenomenal. All right, so let's actually get in some case studies. All right, I know that you're gonna be the speaker for the mastermind uh, experience this weekend, but give us maybe some 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 examples of how you were able to raise some capital and what that looks like practically for us watching today. Um, yeah, so there's tons of different ways. There's secured, unsecured. You can if you have the deal. Um, potentially if it's a deal you have built in equity right so um at that point you can find lenders that are willing to lend in first position almost 100 percent loan to value sometimes 120 percent loan to value maybe they'll do the private the the purchase price plus the renos because it's in you know you either have experience or it's in an unbelievable neighborhood or there's so much upside or or, or one of those those scenarios um that way so secured is is, is effortless when you have the deal um and then you, you also have second position which is um you know a, a lot of the time like we like to use uh we have certain relationships built with with private lenders that we use the first position to acquire the property and we use seconds to be able to fund the deals um that way and in that point you're able to use uh extra resources because you know you have rrsps that you can tap into um to lend into secured deals. So you have a lot of people that you can get to invest in potentially at cheaper interest rate, um, money that they don't have access to because it's tied up in the RSP. Um, so uh, then there's unsecured, which, um, you know, if people are willing to invest in you, um, you as a person, you as a company, you as your deal, you can also raise money that way where people just, you know, yeah, you can you can do what's called a promissory note and a promissory note is the agreement to to make payments um, or set a 
uh, uh, an interest rate on X money and pay at a certain time, like there's terms, conditions. It is so flexible with the way you can structure stuff privately. If you've just gone to a bank before, yeah, it's a whole nother world when you start going into the private scene, right? It's not the interest rates flexible. The terms are flexible. The, the, the time is flexible. Everything is. So it's where you see creative financing come into play. Everything is absolutely negotiable on the private side. When you go into the bank, you got to understand, no matter if it's RBC or CIBC or if it's ABC, listen, they're all just one type of lender. The truth is there, there are so many different other lenders out there where, especially in the private world, literally anything is negotiable. And so once you open yourself up to that area, you will start to see how the opportunities for doing deals become endless. Now, I want to actually have you kind of break down an example of a deal that you did and then uh, describe the financing that you used and how you got that financing to accomplish that deal. Sure. Uh, like I start to finish, like I, I've done, uh, I've done so many in the last little bit and they've all just been uniquely done. Um, what was one of your favorites? Creatively. So, so um, my favorite one is meeting the, meeting the lender through the pawn shop. Um, just yeah, let's shit, talk about develop, developing the relationship. He'd come in, he would talk, uh, found out he's a realtor in the area coming up from the city, started talking about the area, talking about his cottage, blah, blah, blah. It's, found out that we were super like I got um we, uh we buy houses stuff all over my shop so um there was he's like what's this that's my other company blah, blah. so we, it, it, the relationship would be built start coming in we were having coffee together and then he's like what are you working on now I'm closing on this deal and I'm actually looking for for um some financing he's like well I've never done a private lending deal but you know it sounds like you got you know your your feet wet and you're experienced like I'd love to be your lender. And I was able to create that relationship, literally just shooting shit and talking about what I was doing. He was, he lent a hundred percent loan to value, uh, on the property. Um, phenomenal interest rate, 8%, which is, you know, perfect for private lending. Um, it was a longer deal. So thank God he was able to do, a uh, a, a better interest rate. Cause at any other interest rate, it probably would have drowned on the deal. Um, and it worked out great. Like it was a win-win for both scenarios. Um, uh, then I've done, um, I've done, un I, I've done a lot of unsecured um, and offering higher interest rates based on the unsecured, uh, just based on speed. So if I, if I needed something quicker to be able to, to finish some renos or, or act on another deal, um, offering higher interest rates, unsecured compared to secured just for speed and ease like they deserve the extra points on that right and there's so much more risk in that on on the unsecured aspect um so i have a lot of guys and girls investing in me that way um and sometimes it's not high enough money for it worth it to pay the lawyer fees to secure it on a property or my proper they want to lend it longer than a couple months so attaching it to a property before it sells um, you know, with it, meanwhile, they're just going to lend it back to me anyway. So they just kept it on a, on an unsecured basis because they have trust in me. Um, and they're investing in me essentially, as opposed to, um, the specific deal, which you'll find guys, like once you start doing deals, like people aren't investing in the deal anymore, they're investing in you. So, um, That's I've done deals. Really yeah. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to talk on that for a little bit because Sure. Here, I don't want the, everybody to kind of just blow over what you just mentioned. You literally were able to get, think about this, guys. We're always talking about how we need to put 20% down. We have to save up for our, for our down payment. This is because this is what the banks have conditioned us to learn on how to buy real estate. Now, if we're going to go with the bank, absolutely. You definitely need to comply by the rules and regulations. However, you see in this circumstance that TJ was able to partner with someone who, one, walked into their shop was able to have a simple conversation, was aware of what his model, of what, what he looks to do, what his business is, got to understand each other, and then came to an agreement to do a deal where it was 100% financing. Consider this, y'all, 100% financing. At 8%, he was able to do the deal successfully. And so let me ask you this, TJ. If you have another deal to which you want to use that lender, what are the chances that that lender will want to, be, want to do a second deal or a third deal or a fourth deal with you? Absolutely. So that's where the next the, the next stage goes, right? So like it, it's just proof of concept and then seeing the before and afters. This was a little bit of an extensive reno. So we're almost at 200K renos in this one, which is, 
you know, if you're brand new, don't get into these, uh, you know, full gut jobs. Um, this had structural issues and stuff as well. Um, that, so like, we're, we're still working on that project and, you know, like if, if you guys are following me or, uh, um, or whatever, you'll see in the next couple months that the, it'll be finally bund buttoned up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. And, and it's when I talked about at the very beginning about having your goals aligned and, and you find that partnership, that is what he wanted. He had, he sold his house. He had money sitting there doing nothing. He was venting about the bank and he's making no money and he lost some money in stocks and this and that. And he's so excited about real estate and he did a course here and there and, and, um, me like talking about what I was doing, um, like our goals aligned. Wow. That's amazing. Do you see the level of detail that he actually was able to understand from his partner? A lot of times we just want to say, Hey, I'm looking for money. Okay. Let's do a deal. No. Did you see how much he understood about, about his partner? He understood the pain points. What was actually going wrong as to why he thought it was better to invest in TJ rather than other assets that aren't performing as well. What was it that in their circumstance that they valued TJ's knowledge, his experience, his network, his systems, his resources that he could hand him his money and trust him that he can deliver. See, he understood the person. And as a result of understanding the person, he had access to his money. So here's the key thing I want y'all to recognize. It's all about relationships. This is not a transactional business. See, when you're going to the bank, they will see you as a number. That's just the truth. Because there's literally millions of you who want to buy real estate and will go to the bank and you're just a number. So they'll go, they'll put you through a whole process, credit score, buying history, uh, debt to debt to service ratio, this, that, and the third. Whereas for TJ, it was like, my name is TJ. I buy real estate. This is what I do. I would love to get to know you. Let's do some deals. See, what, what TJ did not rec what what TJ did not uh, specify was oh I got an 800 credit score oh I have I have uh, 17 houses that you can uh, you know use as collateral oh I got uh, I got a, a, a consistent income of 300 thousand every two weeks I got X Y and Z none of that he didn't mention any of that but because the truth is you don't need any of that. And so what you need to do is just replicate what TJ has done time and time and time and time again, because here's the actual truth, y'all. If you're able to do this with just maybe two, maybe three, it depends on your business or your goals. But if you can do this with two or three people and you're able to recycle their money deal after deal after deal, this could be rentals. It could be student rentals. It could be, it could be Airbnbs. It could be flipping houses. It could be multifamily, whatever the case may be. You can use them over and over and over again. The reality is you don't ever need a bank. You won't even need yeah, the Touch yeah, on that, Daniel. It's not. It's not just you're not using them. They're using you. 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 You have become the funnel well, for their investment. You're their investment now. So you're the stock that they picked out of the out of out of all of the stocks available, all the people available. You're now that stock that is producing the highest return on their income. Wow! I love Bitcoin. the way you put that. That's phenomenal. <laughs> put that in the chat put some fire emojis in the <laughs> chat because that was beautiful here here's the thing right we're, we're talking about stocks and we're talking about how these things are going up what where is your stock at where where what is your stock being priced at because you'll be able to find that out based on the the level of confidence that investors have in you to to invest in you right pump the tj stock pump the daniel stock pump what whatever your stock is pump that stock up and to raise the, the value <laughs> Right? <laughs> it all comes down to personal development. It all comes down to your network and your expertise and your willingness to take action on a consistent level over a long period of time. When you're able to do that while cultivating relationships and actively taking action, you will be a person whose stock is elevated in the eyes of the investors who want to invest. And so that is actually phenomenal. I really, really love that. And so we're going to go to some Q&A really, really quickly because I really want uh, this opportunity for you to take advantage of TJ and say, hey, TJ, what does it look like for me in my circumstance and my situation? So, guys, put your questions in the chat. I'm telling you, if you don't get your question answered today, it is no one else's fault except for you. And so I need y'all to put it in the chat, all right? Uh, and, 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 while, and while I'm waiting for the questions, I want y'all to take action this week, like for real. And the reason is because you got to take that hop. Remember what I said in the beginning? It's all about small steps. So the small steps today is you got to have conversations. You got to start putting yourself out there. You got to start taking the action that's required so that you can get for, you can move forward in your deal making. Is it going to be raising money? Is it going to be finding that deal? Is it going to be both? It really depends on you and your goals, your circumstance or situation, right? And so 
Here's the homework. I'm going to reiterate it from last week as well because this, the same thing applies. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to go to CashflowTribe.com and connect with at least three investors. How many did I say? One, two, three, uno, dos, tres, right? I need you to communicate. Put yourself out there, right? Understand. See, see, TJ did the same thing. He understood their pain points. Man, my, my money is not performing. I'm getting real tired of the stock market. I'm getting annoyed of X, Y, and Z. This thing is not doing well. So understand that and then position yourself as the solution. Right. And it doesn't just have to be money. It could be I don't have enough time. I don't understand it. I know it works, but it, I don't have the time to take this because I got four kids and I have a job that I work 60 hours a week. But I got all this money or I, 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 I need I need some partners so I can do deals. You got to be that solution. Position yourself to be the one who can solve that problem. And then number three, like I said, find ways to, to add value and simply make the ask. TJ. To, to, to make sure it's not complicated as we might think it is, how do you ask for money? Like, how do you ask for money? Uh, so how do I ask for money? So uh, here, let, me, I... let, me, let me bring you some context. Here are what some conversations I'm having. People are often asking me, well, well, Daniel, do you got to put a 30-slide presentation together that shows your, your, your work history and your experience? And do you got to plan a meeting at a coffee shop or does it got to be over Zoom? Or like, like, talk to us. What is it like for you? Do you do all of that? Yeah, absolutely not. If I had to put a 30 point slide together, <laughs> it would just show all my weaknesses right there. Nobody would want to invest with me. So, um, no, it's just uh, so it's one of those things where it's I'm always talking about what I'm doing. Uh, like I said at the beginning, like I, I love what I do. Everything that I do is exciting and I love getting excited and talking to people. So um, when it comes to networking, I'm always talking about how how can I help you where you're at? Like whatever you're doing, how can I help you? Like just the same Tim Hortons back in the day, you know, would you like a double cup? So like, how can I help you? Um, you? Tell me what you're doing. If there's anything we can align together, I've got deals, I've got money, I've got resources, I've it, it, all of these things. By having these conversations daily, all day. So sometimes, you know, it would be funny too. I'd be sitting there and be like, what did I really do today? And then I, I analyze, you know, how many conversations did I have? Holy crap. I had 12 conversations today. That's 12 people that know what I'm doing. And the, it's funny that like, sometimes the conversations go nowhere. Sometimes it, you know, something happens right away, a spark or whatever. Sometimes I'm help like I'm able to ignite, you know, a fire in somebody and they're able to go out and do stuff. Like it's very rewarding. And then sometimes it, it circles back, like we're able to create a win-win in a partnership or, 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 you know, stuff like that. So um, when I, when something happens, I already have the people that I know to call because I've had those talks already, like before the deal even happened, before the money even happened, I've had the talk. And when, when I already know the Rolodex that I'm going to call uh, or the relationships already been built and I, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm building that relationship with that person. That's actually, so. man, it's just as simple as that. You know what's interesting? And 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 I'll tell you the truth that TJ is not, he is not like like saying one thing and doing another. Literally, when, when I connected with this brother to tell him, hey, you need to help tribe understand how to, uh, uh, how to grow uh, your business with joint venture partnerships. Before I connected with him, he actually was on the phone just locking up another JV deal. Wasn't that the truth? That you we, we had connected and you were just telling me, man, this is perfect because I literally just got off the phone, off the phone, not a, not a coffee shop meeting, not a 30 minute Zoom call, not a, a long presentation. It was simply a phone call because he took action. He does it consistently. He's putting himself out there and he's getting those partnerships, right? And so really just want to highlight that. I, I, I will be getting to all your questions. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Keep them coming. TJ, I even posted this here where it shows how you sold firm. You've been doing deals. Hotel the property for 400K, right? And so to, uh, I need you to tell these people, is this possible? Is it actually possible to do real deals in this market in today's climate? No, that was a scene from the movie. <laughs> no, obviously. So <laughs> as, as, today, today alone, Daniel, like I, I was able to sell a deal um that i closed on in january okay so uh, we just went firm today uh, i was able to create a win-win scenario with another investor um you know 
<laughs> I'm going to say something funny and, and some of you might get really upset at this, but I actually have too many deals right now. Um, <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> I, I was able to build a relationship with another investor. I had a deal I was working on. I didn't have any, uh, enough crews in my area to be able to tackle this deal. Um, we were working on it for a bit. We got the tenant out. We've had it since January. Uh, we started some renos. Um, we were just about to, um, like we're done, uh, we were done getting, we're about to put the drywall on. And I started having a conversation with another investor and we were able to strike a deal to, uh, for him to purchase the property off of me. I'm still be able to make the profit split that I want to, because what he's going to do the, to the property didn't fit my business model, but he's able to add value. So it was actually a super win-win. So, um, he's going to be getting the, the same amount of, uh, uh, like, it, uh, profit margin that he wants on his his uh, duplex conversion, which isn't part of my business model. Um, and I was able to get the same profits I wanted at the end of my flip, which is an insane win-win. So I ha having to do the flip at all, um, and I still made the profit that I wanted to make on the flip. Now it gets even sweeter. So he, he needed the financing for the deal. So what I did was I went and I raised the money unsecured to be able to secure it to this property as a VTB to be able to cover the financing for his deal. And I'm making interest rate on the spread on that VTB deal as well. So I'm the lender, I'm the deal finder. Technically I was half the contractor and then built the relationship where I hope he gets a fucking home run so that I can do this again and again and again with this investor. And I just become his guy. So, um, relationships man it's oh are you kidding me yeah like are you crazy. kidding me so the question ladies and gentlemen is it possible is it possible oh my goodness the amount of things that you can do on one deal when you just put together the action the knowledge the network right and this just goes to show man you you don't know what you don't know until you put yourself in a room of killers just like tj who are doing amazing things Think about this. He's also running. He's running another business with a pawn shop. He he has business partners and other businesses that he runs, and he's able to accomplish all of this because he understands the value of relationships. This is so 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 good. And so, if you want to continue on this conversation, y'all, I want to encourage you to check out Cash for Tribe if you haven't already, ladies and gentlemen. I know a lot of you are already looking to take action. But I know there's about 29% of you are still learning, and that's okay. I know how to push you, but I want to let you know about what opportunities are out there. We have a whole course library with Canada's number one real estate community where you can use premium calculators and run all your deals, literally all the information that you need, closing costs, the renovation costs, what line by line, the, the, the construction budget, whatever the case may be, you can run it through our calculators. We, we guarantee you it is better than rate hub or any other type of calculator out there right now. You have weekly trainings that are done live on zoom, live on zoom where you're on, not just me is on camera, but you're on camera. The instructors are on camera and we're all connecting. We're all networking. We're all able to build together. And we also have a community where you're able to network with each other. We want to set you up for success. Our core values is very simple. Community, results, impact, and transparency. Through those four areas, we want to push you to success. Keep those, keep those questions coming because we're going to answer them right away. So our membership is full of value, as I should say, right behind our videos. <clears throat> if you want to grab a membership and take action and really get to doing that first deal, just like TJ is doing, we highly recommend you grab a premium account. If you have any questions about this, you might have seen her. Sarah is in the chat. Sarah is in the chat. She will absolutely get you set up right away. No problem whatsoever. As a matter of fact, Sarah, if you could just put your number in the chat because I'm going to put something special for y'all, which is not on these slides, but I will do it right for y'all uh, coming up in a second. The premium membership is at $59 a month. So if you're just looking to dabble in and just look to do the work, um, $59 a month, no contracts. You can go right in and take advantage, not a problem. But if you are a real action taker and you're ready to do deals and you're ready to take it to the next level, um, I highly recommend that you sign up for our annual membership. The reason is because we have a whole suite of courses, a whole suite of, um, of information that we can give you. And on top of that, there's a special bonus we will be throwing in a free ticket to our mastermind experience. 
This is a full day where you're going to dive deep, dive super deep into our, our, our topics where for this weekend is how to invest using other people's money, how to invest other people's money. Vinny, do me a favor, man. If you could just uh, uh, fix the phone number up top, it's 0463. Really appreciate that, my man. Um, but if you come to a mastermind experience of telling you, your life will be different because somebody like TJ is going to be showing you the ropes of how he is able to do deals, not just as the buyer, but also as the seller. Imagine that you're selling a property and you're still able to come around and lend. Like that is amazing. Not many people know how to do this type of stuff, let alone be able to raise thousands of dollars in order to do your deals. So here's the deal, y'all. If you're ready to, do, to take action and make things go, text that number. You are going to get $250 off the annual membership. You're going to get a free ticket to the Mastermind Experience, and you're going to get a whole year's worth of knowledge and value at Cashflow Tribe. Text that number. The first person to text it is going to get that discount. And don't you sweat it. Don't you sweat it. Even if you're not the first person to text it, you will absolutely be getting a discount from, from our homegirl, Sarah, because she's going to set you straight. You can also see the offer on the offer page where you can check it out. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and get those questions uh, going to uh, get those questions answered right away. But just to remind you, it is 588 for the year, 588 for the whole year, and you'll be able to get a free ticket to the mastermind. TJ, real quick, 30 seconds. How would you describe the mastermind experience? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I was in, uh, if I didn't spend that 500 bucks in May of last year. Yeah, May of last year. Um, I was sitting on the couch. This is going to be a little longer than 30 seconds, Daniel. Uh, I was sitting on the <laughs> Go couch. Ahead, uh, I joined Cashflow Tribe. Um, and keep in mind, it was, it was a lot smaller room back then. I think there was like 788 people or something on, on the website. Um, and uh, yeah, like I, I sat there and I joined it. I was learning and I was, and I saw the mastermind and I was like 500 bucks. They used to be in person before COVID for like five grand or more. Right. So I was like, this is steel. I can get in virtually. I got nothing but time. Um, but I don't spend money. I was, I was, I'm very, very, uh, very cheap that way. And, and $500 on myself was just not an option. I, like I'm wearing the same shoes I have for three years. Um, and it was, I was him and Han, him and Han until literally it, it ended at midnight for the ticket. And at 1158, I was like, Ugh, and I hit it. And I didn't even tell my wife because she, like, it's not <laughs> something I could justify. Be like, cause I don't ever spend money in our whole relationship like that. So I, 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 I bought it that morning, went on it two days in at the end of the two days, I told her that I spent 500 bucks. She's like, you're an idiot, but I love you. And <laughs> After that, it was, it was like lift off, boom, like, like all the limiting beliefs. Um, keep in mind, I, I bled that 500 bucks. I asked every question. I was all over Ben and Matt. Like you, you wouldn't believe I was like, I finally get to talk to these people. Um, and I used every ounce of time I had and you know, it wasn't enough. So, you know, three weeks later, like, I used OPM and I was able to jump onto the council and sit at the big table. And, and then it was just, you know, I don't want to give too many secrets. I want people to jump on it. <laughs> I, don't, I want many. people to jump on this mastermind here and then I'll talk about it in two weeks. <laughs> the truth is TJ has the sauce. He's not only talking about it, he's doing it. He literally, this is why it's his goal to become a private lender. But, and he's well in his way, by the way. Well on his way. And so for those, those who are asking, the Mastermind Experience will be taking place on the 29th of May. It's the last Saturday of the month. Highly recommend you check it out. All right. So I'm not going to waste no more time. Let's get to the questions, y'all. Let me get to the questions. I'm going to find the earliest one. So Z Bailey says, TJ, are you afraid of being the first to gentrify a neighborhood? Oh, I was the first to gentrify a neighborhood. There's a block on my hometown that I flipped. Um, and then I bought another deal on the corner I, and I'm like, I'm determined to buy the other three properties. I was actually upset because I almost bought the third one, but they, uh, somebody snuck, uh, snuck in and bought it on, uh, on me and tore it down. And I was, uh, I was upset, but yeah, it's like Monopoly. It's, it's, it's exciting. That's the game. I love it. All right. Adrian Montine says, what's up, Adrian? He says, do you TJ have a favorite method of finding your strengths and weaknesses? Finding the strengths conversation so like like i said a million times here if you're not talking and you're not listening the best the best relationship builder is listening it sounds like i talk a lot but i listen a lot as well 
Wow. That's all. I love that answer. I love that answer. All right. So Z Bailey also asks, TJ, how do we identify investors in the forum? So let's say we're on Cash or Tribe or, or on the Facebook group or in any other forum. How do we identify the right investors that we need to connect with? Uh, again, by talking, posting, being out there. Um, they're all you're all investors. You're sitting in the room. Nobody's going to join it if they're not an investor um, or want to be an investor or want to 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 have real estate as part of their goals. Um, what's super cool. It's not even, you know, just a real estate there, there's business owners. There's, um, there's whole other niches that, that, uh, you guys will learn at some point or, or that are, that are there to, to, for you guys to have access to. You know what? Like, I think what is so important about your answers is it's just, it's actually showing people it's actually a lot simpler than you think. Communication, communication. It's all it is. <laughs> just talk, just talk. Get to know people. Let people get to know you. And as you continue to do that, then you'll start to find information. You'll start to uh, uncover golden nuggets. You'll start to understand things about yourself. You'll start to understand things about other people. And you just got to do that over and 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 over again. That's really what it is. And and when when you were – so I see this a lot where it's just like, hey, can you lend me money or, hey, can you do this? It's it's building that relationship. Make yourself – you know, um, an asset to them somehow, like give your time for their time. Like, um, I have, you know, what, something that, that upsets me a lot is when I spend that time to help and they don't listen or, or, you know, if I can, you know, and that's why I like doing these large rooms, you know, if I can touch base with one out of the 63 people, you know, I'm happy. Um, it's that's when right. I talk to 63 people and they have, they don't listen to it or, or, or don't take in any any advice to help them not make the same mistake I did. Um, that's upsetting, right? So keep in mind when you're when you're when your uh, time is more valuable than the money, than the deal, than the anything. Your time is the most valuable asset. So when you seek time from somebody who is experienced or a mentor or anything like that, make sure you are not wasting their time because they don't get their time back. That's right. That's right. Time is the real scarcity here, which is awesome. All right, let's zoom through some more questions as we got. We're, we're getting closer to the time. Margaret Spence, what's up? Uh, she says, how do you start out like a newbie, someone that has no family that is interested in real estate investing? Where do you start? Um, sorry, to define the question a little bit. So, um, you know, if it's raising money. Yeah, you know, not, let me, not let me restate it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so- yeah, so let's say you have no family members, right? And let's say you're starting brand new, so you don't have any connections, right? But you want to get started in real estate, and we're talking about JV Partners, o- OPM, right? What would you advise as a new person? How would they sh- how they should get started? Yeah, so when it comes to raising money, like I like none of my family members had had money, so I had to be in the rooms where people were doing what I wanted to do. Cashflow Tribe is the first, you know, is an amazing step, uh, a resource that I didn't have when I started. Um, this is phenomenal. Um, you're you're in a community where there there is the room that you can talk about what you're doing and people can listen and you can hear what they're talking about and what they're doing. Um, so just finding the right room. And then and then once you get once you guys start getting more successful, it, the, you know, you got to pay to get into the big room. It's worth paying to get into the bring room because then you're you're able to scale and go so much faster. That's right. That's right. I actually got a question from Tanya Blakely, uh, followed by Margaret. They asked the same question. Hey, TJ, do you have any spots open for mentoring newbies? <laughs> so what's really cool is, um, you know, councils uh, put me in a position to be a mentor in training. So if you guys ever, um, you know, take the big leap uh, and, and join council, uh, I'm one of the resources you have access to. Keep in mind that doesn't mean you know I'm not I'm holding you I'm always here. You guys can can DM me, hit me up. I love connecting. You know you guys have homework. Three investors to connect with. You know I'm one of them. That's if right. you want, I'm always available. So uh, you know I might not get back to you right away, but you know I'll squeeze you in my schedule and uh, we'll, we'll connect. That's right. He's making money. So if we're gonna be talking, let's talk money. You understand? And I love that. I love that. Uh, uh, let me uh, get through the next question here uh let's see okay tj what area of town are you investing uh what area of town uh so i'm north of barry 
Uh, that's my hometown is is in Midland. Um, I'm doing all the surrounding area. I have joint venture partnerships in Aurelia in Alliston. Um, so I'm I'm flipping uh, anywhere I can find a joint venture partner that I trust. And and so we got two flips in Aurelia, two flips in Alliston, two flips in uh, surrounding Midland area. Um, potentially a couple of flips lined up in Barry. Um, yeah. That's awesome. All right. A couple more questions here. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Uh, Peter oh, can says, touch, can I touch yeah, on two ahead. things that I saw? So, uh, I'm, somebody said I'm on disability myself. I yeah, was just so about I got, to say that. So my, uh, my, my brother-in-law is on disability as well. And he's, uh, he's in the middle of wholesaling a deal that, um, makes him more money than his whole year on disability. So um, just from what I was able to help him learn. Um, and Jeez. Then, yeah, yeah. So that's amazing. Just want to touch on that. <laughs> doesn't, that, doesn't that just change your perspective? It just goes to show you that it's possible, right? Let TJ's brother be your Roger Bannister. The Roger Bannister is someone who ran, I think it was a mile or a quarter mile. I'm pretty sure it was a mile in under four minutes. Right. Where before he actually did that, people thought, no, you can never do that. Nobody could ever run a mile in under four minutes. Well, Roger Bannister did that. And as a result, now a very healthy or a very active high school athlete can accomplish that now. But it's because someone set the standard. So, Peter, let let TJ's brother in law set the standard for you. He He's about to complete a wholesale deal where he will be paid more than his entire disability for the year. That's amazing, right? You can either look at that and say, oh, that can't be for me. Or you could say, wow, if that person did it, so can I. I highly recommend you take the road of the second thought and you can go ahead and get started yourself. All right, so Jan says, hey, TJ, do you have the same JV partner for all your deals? No, uh, I, as I could tell from the last question, uh, I have uh, I have a JV partnership in Aurelia. Um, I have a JV partnership in Alliston. Uh, JV partnerships... Um, in lending, um, JV partnerships in business. So it's all over, it's all over the place. So, um, I do like sticking to my certain areas that I know and trust. And when I do pick my JV partner, they need to be like I was in my area. Like I was able to act. There's a deal in Aurelia. We were able to lock up from a wholesaler, which is, uh, too funny because, um, you know, some people don't have success that way. And, uh, I wasn't familiar with the area. My joint venture partner was, he was able to analyze that. Like I sent the, the deal to him. We were able to analyze that deal and under five minutes, he was able to reach out, literally pulled over as he was driving home, looked it all up, ran the number, called his realtor super quick, ran all the numbers in under five minutes. And I, and I, I sent the deposit on site unseen uh, on a deal in a neighborhood that I didn't know, but he knew. And I trusted him so much that I pulled the trigger in five minutes. Um, and I haven't even seen the deal. I don't even know what street it's on. So, wow. Wow. I mean, it, relationships, everybody communication, everybody. It just goes to show you that it can take you a long way when you have the right people in your circle. That's amazing. I love that. Um, uh, Steve says, TJ, how do you find your deals? Aren't you Gigi? Uh, so, <laughs> So one third is referrals, and that's the one I want to I want to I want to drive drive down your throats tonight. Is um, referrals talk about what you're doing with every single person in your network and in your area? Um, like you know, sometimes you just get handed ones because you're talking a lot, <laughs> um, and. Yeah, so we, one third is marketing, one third is hunting, and one third is referrals. So um, there, it's all the same stuff that you guys are going to hear. You know, Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji. Uh, we do massive amounts of flyer campaigns, and when I say massive amount, I'm saying like you know, if you think you're doing a flyer campaign, we're doing triple that. So um, and we're doing uh, and, and and we're. We're not doing, you know, everywhere. We're just doing specifically the areas we want to target that fits our business model. Right, right. You want to be super tight on your business model because that's what's going to help you understand how to move with speed. All right. All right. So last question of the day. Last question goes to Steve. Your JVs, TJ. Don't they don't they don't compete against one another like a conflict of interest? Uh, no, like uh, it's called a win win for a reason. Right. Um so what I do with my JVs is I find my JV and I keep him so busy that he can't think about anybody else's deal. So 
my 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 Aurelia guy, he's like, oh, can we get one? And and then it went from one to three, and then I I sold the third one off to this investor that I talked to you about today, just so I could take a little bit out of his pipeline because it was a little much at first. But um, so yeah. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank TJ. Put it in the comments one time for TJ because he's phenomenal. I want to I want to remind you that he is definitely going to become a mentor and he absolutely will be giving you the value that you absolutely need on the 29th of May at this month's Mastermind Experience where the topic is OPM, how to invest in real estate using other people's money. You can be the active person or the or the passive person, but this weekend you're going to learn to be both regardless of your circumstance because if TJ's doing it, you absolutely can. I appreciate y'all in the comments, man. Give TJ the love, man. That was phenomenal. One of my favorites. Appreciate it. And uh, any last words, TJ, do you want to give to the people before we head on out of here? Yeah, absolutely. A couple of you are asking how to connect with me. You can uh, DM me on Facebook, uh, TJ Ainsboro. It's just my name. Um, and you can also uh, uh, hit me up on Instagram. It's at Flipping Simcoe. Um, and I just, I post uh, all, all the progress pics and, and, and deals and stuff that we're doing, so. Flipping Simcoe, put it in the chat one time. All yeah, right. At Flipping Simcoe, yeah. At Flipping Simcoe. Very Perfect. simple, easy to remember. Check out the homie on Instagram. He's absolutely going to be documenting, as he always has been, his journey. Until next time, take care, everybody. Appreciate you, each and every one of you. And until next time, stay safe, take action, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thanks for having me.